Hi everyone, I'm Mathieu Silla and today I will present you our work on frequency reuse in IAB based 5G networks using graph coloring methods. So nowadays, number of devices connected to wireless networks is constantly growing and in order to guarantee their quality of service, 5G offers uh, performance improvements and access to new frequency bands. And these uh, frequency bands allow uh, higher throughputs and lower latencies, but at the detriment of a shorter range. So that means that the number of base stations, or G not B, uh, must be increased uh, in order to maintain complete coverage area. So the installation of a G not B is expensive because it involves deploying uh, fiber uh, for the backhaul link and one solution to reduce the cost of densification is to use multi-hop mesh network called IAB network and that stands for integrated access and backhaul. As the name implies, IAB allows the use of wireless backhaul links between GNOTBs and uh, these links can uh, use the same frequencies as the access links for the user equipment. So uh, two use cases are frequently presented uh, by removing the constraints of a wired backhaul. So you can use IAB networks for urban network densification and uh, also during temporary event where traffic increase significantly. So on the right side, you can see an IAB network structure example with the first GNOTB on the left that is the IAB donor. So it's the GNOTB physically connected to the core network through a fiber link. And it's composed of a central unit that organizes the IAB network and also of a distributed unit that uh, provide an access point to other devices. The other GNOTB is an IAB node. So IAB nodes are GNOTBs with wireless backhaul capabilities and uh, they have a mobile termination port that allows them to connect to a distributed unit like uh, user equipment does. So each IAB node is connected to the IAB donor by a direct wireless link or through another IAB node. The routing topology of IAB networks can be a spanning tree with the donor as root or a direct acyclic graph if the IAB nodes can have multiple parents. So in this work, we focus on IAB networks using the millimeter wave spectrum where the time uh, division duplex is used. Okay, so IAB implies an increasing amount of radio transmission, so it is necessary to be able to manage the interference efficiently. And uh, firstly, due to self-interference, GNOTBs uh, can't receive while they are transmitting, so we need to operate in half duplex mode. So uh, as an example here, you can see that when uh, node A transmits, his neighbors can't communicate with him. So in order to transmit information uh, from donor to DUE with these uh, half duplex constraints, we took an example here with a uh, spine tree topology which is the most studied topology in the literature. But the proposed uh, resource allocation algorithm will also work with mesh network. And the advantage by taking a spanning tree topology is we can uh, assign a level to each equipment uh, on the network and make them transmit in an alternating way. So uh, as an example here, during a first slot, the node with an even level will be able to transmit 
to their neighbors. And during the second slot, the equipment with an odd level will be the transmitters. So to avoid interference for receivers, the resources used by uh, the neighboring transmitters must be different. So in here, as an example, you can see that the resources used by donor and node B must be different because they both interfere node A. And same thing here for, for the last uh, slot, resources of uh, node A and node C must be different. So we can do that by dividing the frequency band into subband and allocate this uh, subband to the different equipment in the network. So in order to correctly allocate these resources, we have worked on a solution using a graph coloring approach. So here on the left, you can see a more complete AB network with uh, the donor at uh, level uh, zero, uh, four AAB uh, nodes and four uh, user equipment. So the dashed link between equipment represent interference linked that are not used for routing. And the central unit have the global knowledge of, these, uh, of the interference in the IAB network thanks to the reference signals that are broadcast by the equipment. And you can find more information with the reference below. So uh, when you have an IAB network like this one, you can uh, create a link graph where um, the different nodes represent the different equipments in the network and two nodes are linked if they are interfering each other. So here we make a difference between the routing link and interference link because uh, thanks to that we can divide into two slots all the uplink and downlink transmissions. So by using the same the same transmitter and receiver repartitions as I have explained before. We could have a slot one with even nodes that are transmitters and a slot two where that's the odd nodes that are transmitting. So the graph coloring method for interference management that have been uh, already studied used interference graph to know the constraints between the different equipments of the network. So by taking the same uh, idea, we create interference graph for each slot, where the nodes will be the transmitting equipments during the slot, and two nodes will be linked together if they are interfering a common receiver. So as an example here, the node M3 and the UE1 are linked because they both interfere UE3 on the link graph. So in order to allocate subbands to the transmitting equipment during each slot, we use a graph coloring algorithm on the interference graph. So uh, it's the same that has already been used for IoT network. So it's uh, described on the reference below and it allows us to divide the entire frequency band into subbands, which is represented by a unique color. And how does it work? Is we browse all the nodes by their decreasing number of neighbors. So for slot one, as an example, we start by the node D or the UE one and uh, attribute to each of them a different color because they are linked. Next, we go to UE two and node four and they will have also different color because the subgraph composed of D node four and UE one and two is a complete graph to so all the nodes are connected to each other. So we need to have different subbands for each of the equipments. Okay, and the node three could reuse the same subbands that have already been attributed to UE2 and node four, because as it's not linked to them, it will not lead into interference. So now we know the different constraints we have uh, between the different transmitters during a slot. So we can made the frequency band uh, allocation. So here on the left, you have an example of uh, how the frequency band is divided into subbands and attributed to the different equipments. 
and so you can see you can see for this slot one that the node 3 have the access to the same resources as node 4 and ue2 and as the two slots are independent the same colors don't need to represent the same resources and so now to be able to test this method that I just present you, we made some performance evaluation. So we use a custom simulator that we developed internally and we run full buffer simulations to test different resource allocation solutions. So we are using the IAB network topology that is described uh, here on the top of the screen. And on the different tables here, you can see global simulation parameters and the most important ones are that uh, we are using, that we are working on 30 gigahertz frequency band in TDD downlink only. So um, the different packets will be generated by the donor and reach the UE. And as we made full buffer simulation, we increased the size of the generated packets from 20 to 1500 bits. We also use a channel model that I've been described in the reference below to be able to see the, the impact of interference for the receivers. And we compare four different scheduling algorithms. So the reuse one algorithm will not take into account the interference in the network and it will attribute the entire frequency band to the different equipments. The link coloring algorithm is based on what already exists for resource allocation in IRB networks in the state of the art. And it used interference graph that have the active link as nodes. So it leads to a fully centralized resource allocation algorithm because the central unit will attribute specific resources for each link. So the G node Bs will not be able to make local resource allocation for their neighbors. The semi-centralized solution use the same interference graph as we described earlier, but here during the subband allocation, so the graph coloring, we are not able to reuse the same subbands. So the entire frequency band will be divided by the number of transmitters during the slot. And finally, the semi-centralized with special reuse algorithm is the one we proposed. And now regarding the simulation results, we have on the left the average packet delay depending on the load, so increasing uh, size of the new generated packets. And on the right, we have the number of bits the UE received uh, per slot. We can see that the uh, reuse one solution in red is the worst one because it don't uh, take into account the interference. So the throughput of the user will be extremely low and the packet delay will uh, quickly increase since we have interference on the EAB nodes. The centralized solution in orange is quite better because it takes care about interference, but the fact that it doesn't allow local scheduling by G node Bs make it worse than the rest. So we can see that the system congestion is reached around slot 18,000 with a capacity limited to 1,800 bits per slot. The semi-centralized solution in blue is better with uh, congestion that appear around slot 24,000 and the throughput of the UE will reach around 2,500 bits per slot. Finally, our proposed solution in green is the one who have the better performance with the delay of the package that uh, increasing the latest and the user throughput who reach around 2,800 bits per slot. So now to conclude, we see that uh, IAB allows a great flexibility in the deployment of 5G network. And the graph coloring method we present here could also be reused in other mesh networks. Our proposed solution is the most efficient ones in terms of packet delay and throughput for an equivalent load. And now for the work we will make in the near future, we will uh, study the impact of MIMO on the equipments and also extend the solution to DAG topology. We will also improve 
the channel model to take account about uh, mobility of the IV nodes and of the UEs. And also we will test the performance in different environments like 3D urban micro and urban macro. Thanks for watching.